Hey guys, so I just finished making this little updraft convection kiln in my backyard. A lot of you have seen my previous video about building an adobe kiln. If you haven't seen that one, I'll put the link right up here for you. So today I'm going to show you how I built this. I'm going to go through step by step how I built this little kiln in my backyard, how you can do the same in your yard. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost. So making primitive pottery in an urban area can be really challenging sometimes when you're looking for a way to fire if you don't want to fire in a standard electric kiln. I like to travel out to public lands where there's lots of firewood, but that's not available to everybody. Not everybody lives someplace where there's a lot of public lands nearby where you can build fires. Or you might not even have a car. You might uh, rely on public transportation like a lot of people in urban areas do. This is a little convection kiln like this is a great opportunity for somebody that lives in an urban area to fire primitive pottery at home. It doesn't take up much space. It doesn't make a lot of open flames and smoke uh, that will alert people or make people call the fire department. Uh, and it works great. So today I'm going to show you how I built this. You may have seen the video my, where I made my previous kiln out of adobe. And that was a good option for where I was in a semi-rural area. I had lots of soil where I lived that I could use to build the kiln out of. So the kiln cost me nothing in that case. In this case, I'm in the middle of Tucson and I didn't have a lot of earth that I could use for making an adobe kiln. My yard is pretty much landscaped, so I just can't dig a big hole in the middle of it. So what I opted to do was use red bricks that I was able to get at Home Depot, relatively inexpensively, and then I laid those up with mud mortar. So this used 107 bricks from Home Depot, where they cost 50 cents a piece, so not a lot of money. So I drove to a place where I could safely dig clay, and I used a bucket to measure, and I measured how much clay I got, and then I went to a wash where I could dig sand, and I measured sand. That way I could make sure that I had a good proportion of sand to clay. I actually mixed 50-50, so the mortar here is 50% clay, it's a relatively pure clay, and 50% sand. And then I just mixed it up in my wheelbarrow with a shovel and laid them up. Uh, you can adjust the size of your kiln if you're trying to build this. You can build it with a larger diameter if you want to fire more or larger pottery. I didn't want to build a kiln that could fire a lot of pottery. I wanted to build one where I could quickly do some test firings. And so usually when I'm testing a new clay or something like that, it's just something small I'm firing, a small pot or maybe a test tile, something like that. So I didn't need something large. In this case, I made a circle of seven bricks laid around the base and then just started laying them up like that. I dug into the ground a little bit to give it a little more stability. So it's laid about one brick deep in the ground but there's no foundation of any sort. It's just bricks on top of bricks laid up with mud. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the we stand on the opposite shore. Hello, so having constructed the brick shell, I need to have some kind of grate in there to set the pottery on above the fire. Something that will allow the heat and the gases and the smoke to come up through, uh, but that will hold the pottery. Uh, now there's ways to do this primitively using clay. Uh, in this case, I just want to get it done quickly. In the past, I've used stone sticking out to prop a grate on, uh, but that leaves you the problem of if that stone happens to crack in the fire, which stone often does when it gets hot, it'll crack, uh, then there's nothing to, to brace that on anymore. I've thought about building pieces of metal into, laying it into the brickwork that would stick out, uh, but metal gets fatigued from use in the hot too. Uh, over the heating and cooling of the metal, it'll start to kind of warp and bend and it can kind of wear out from being heated a lot. And so what I did was I drilled holes into the brick and then those holes allow me to insert a bolt into them. And I'm just gonna sit it there. It's not gonna be threaded in or anything, but if the bolts ever become worn out from heating, I can always take them out and replace them. So I think that's a better option. And then I went down and bought this barbecue grill. Uh, so I measured the diameter of my hole. It's about 14 inches. And so then I got a barbecue grill that is 13 inches, so it fits nicely inside, and then that'll sit down in there and hold the pots up. I also got a heavy-duty one. They were different grades. There were some thinner ones, 
uh, but I opted for heavier because the metal kind of loses some of its integrity from uh, repeated heatings. And so I figured a heavier duty one would last longer. I look for things I don't know For all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know All in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Hello, Mona. I mistook you for a dream. The engine blows. All right, let's talk for just a minute about measuring temperature in this kiln. Uh, it's going to be very hard for me to measure the temperature in there with my infrared heat gun uh, because when I'm shooting down in, I'm going to have things in the way. I'm going to have something over the top. I may have sherds of pottery over the pottery to kind of hold in heat. So I need to know how hot it is in there, or I could just guess, uh, but I'd rather measure the temperature in there. How about that? So I left a hole that I can slide a thermocouple in, and I used some of that corn husk that I used when I made the ladle, and I just rolled that corn husk up and set it between the bricks and then laid mud around it. So the idea is when I light the first fire in it, that corn husk will burn away, and I'll have a nice clean opening here running through to the inside that I can slide my thermocouple through. If the hole's not quite big enough, it's just mud. I can always kind of ream it out a little bit and uh, get that thermocouple through there. Thermocouple's probably a half inch, maybe, maybe a little more than a half inch in diameter, but it's not very big, so that should be fine. Hello, Mona. I push back the serious feeling. The end's unknown. To get back the life I used to know. Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know All in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Okay, I'm sure you all have questions about the kiln. So let's get into that. First of all, let's cover the cost. What is the cost of the kiln? The kiln used 107 bricks that I bought at Home Depot for 50 cents a piece. That comes out to a cost of $53.50 for the bricks. The barbecue grill that I put inside cost as much as the bricks, or nearly so. The barbecue grill was $50, and the bolts to hold the grill in place were $7. All told, that comes to a price of $110.50. Another relevant question is, what improvements have I made over my last kiln? Now, if you remember from that video, I talked about the firebox not being large enough to get enough fuel in there to reach the temperatures I wanted. So one of the things I did is I brought the firebox out from the main cylinder of the kiln. That gives me more length to put longer pieces of firewood in there, and hopefully I'll get more fuel, and because the opening is larger, more oxygen in there to the combustion chamber as well. So we'll see how that works out when I do my first firing. Okay, why use mud mortar? Uh, lime-based mortar, standard brick mortar, is lime-based, and lime-based mortar is not going to hold up to the temperatures I'm going to get in that kiln. It's going to start breaking down. And so the mud mortar is a better choice uh, because it's essentially made out of the same material that the pottery I'm firing is, so it's going to hold up to those high temperatures better. Uh, now the mud mortar has a downsize, and that is that uh, it's not stabilized. It, it can erode from rain and moisture. So uh, I live in Tucson. I live in a very dry climate. 
So it's probably not gonna be a huge deal. I may have to touch up places along the top and a few places on the sides after a year or two where it's starting to erode. Uh, adobe structures here in my area have stood for hundreds of years. So uh, it's not a huge problem because it's a fairly dry climate. Now, if you're hoping to build one of these and you live in a moist climate, you need to protect yours from moisture from two different directions. One, from moisture falling from the sky, from rain and other precipitation, you maybe cover it with a tarp or something to keep that rain off of it when you're not using it. But there's another source of moisture that destroys adobe and damp climates, and that's moisture that wicks up from the soil. So if that mud mortar is in contact with the soil and the soil is damp, it will wick moisture up and begin to erode from that. If you're in a moist climate and you're hoping to build one of these, I would suggest you either build it up on a either like a wood or a cinder block platform up off the ground, or at least maybe some concrete stem walls or something, just so you're a good six inches, got your mud at a good six inches or so off of that damp ground. Protect it from moisture from above and from below. So the final question that everybody's probably asking is, how does firing a kiln like this work? Well, mine is not ready to fire yet. Uh, so I will be firing in probably a week or two once all the mud inside of it has a chance to dry thoroughly. So I need to give my kiln enough time for all the moisture to get out of the mortar before I fire it. So in a couple of weeks, I will fire it and I'll record another video showing the firing of that kiln. In the meantime, you can watch the video I made of the firing of my last kiln to get an idea how it works. Pretty much the same idea. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, do me a favor and smash that like button. If you'd like to learn more about firing a primitive convection kiln, check out this video over here, which is going to show that process. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.